Hi, welcome to the Enterprise 2.0 Workbench, Episode 6. My name is John Brunswick, and today we're going to be taking a look at building mobile experiences with the Web Center Portal technology. We're going to be doing this using CSS's media query capability, which lets us sense the viewport on the device accessing the system. So if we're on a small mobile, a tablet, or the desktop, we get to change the look and feel, the layout, and the style of the experience for the end user. The great part here is we're using the one code base, but we're just rearranging the visuals for a particular form factor. So this being said, we're actually going to build out an example together, and feel free to download the sample code with this episode as well. We're going to start out by actually taking a look at a running example. What we have here on the screen isn't exactly Michelangelo's David, but it's here to prove a point. In the upper left hand corner is a logo, in the upper right hand corner is a login area. There's a navigation in the middle of the screen and it actually has a couple different drop down options. There is a collection of text in the body and a right hand panel that provides some offerings as well as a footer. We'll take a look at the code later, but really the gist of what we're looking at is that when we change the resolution of the browser window, the entire page changes the way that it's laid out. So let's go ahead now and look at the page. What's happened, the login box has changed to a link that takes us to the account login. So that frees up more screen real estate. In addition to that, the menu items stay here, but you'll notice that the drop down capability has been removed. Underneath it is the same block of text that we had before in the body, and the offerings have now shifted from the right hand to underneath. Let's go ahead and expand this again, and you'll notice that it actually goes back to its original form factor. So this is a Web Center portal template that's using adaptive design uh, concepts to actually map itself based on the size of the browser window that's viewing it. So when we think about tablets and mobiles, this gives us the ability to cater to each one of those devices. All right, so I've gone ahead and loaded up JDeveloper, and I've created a sample project for us. So I've created a sample called Adaptive Template Sample using the Web Center Portal project. And within this template, I've done just one thing a little bit different that I've preloaded for us. I've gone ahead and created a styles folder under the web content area and added a file called mediaquery.css that we'll talk about a little bit later. The first thing that we're going to want to do is to create a new page template. And to do that in the page templates area, we're going to right click it, hit new, and select a JSF page template. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And we're going to call this our adaptive template. And the one thing that we're going to need to do here is to actually provide an item here in facet definitions called content. And the reason that we do this is when we use this as a template, the pages that are leveraging this template will be pulled into that content facet that we just added here. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And it's going to go ahead and build out the page for us. Now, I'm going to go into the source area. And I'm actually going to add a couple things in here that I will walk us through from a template that I've cr already created. Okay, I have something called this adaptive snippet. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy this, go back to JDeveloper, and I'm going to put this right under page template definition. Let's save this. What I'm going to do then, I'm going to maximize and we'll walk through it together. So the first thing is I'm actually pulling in jQuery from a Google CDN. The reason that I'm doing this is we're, at, we're going to use jQuery to append information to the headers produced within the page markup from Web Center. So headers not as in HTTP headers, but headers as in we're going to add another meta tag to the page markup that lets us do the operations with the viewport. That's going to allow us to cater to different device sizes. Beyond that, we're going to pull in that media query CSS file that I talked about. 
And for the rest of the template, I ended up taking the globe template that ships with Web Center, stripping out a fair amount of the ADF markup, and then providing some items as standard HTML. Within each one of these, if it's something that's ADF based, I'm using style classes so that we can very easily identify and work with the, um, the attributes within the page to style them. And if it's regular HTML, I'm using ID codes and styles as well. One area where you'll notice we're, we're taking use of this is when we do things like work with the site logo, that's all going to be powered by cascading style sheets. One thing that we'll showcase when we go from the different viewport sizes, we're, I have an area called mobile login link, and I have an area called header login box. And you'll see how we can toggle visibility with these on the basis of how big our browsing area is. So there are two other things that may be a little bit unique to this template. One being that we're just going to do some simple unordered lists to get our navigation. The other is that this is the content facet that we added in earlier. So we're taking use of that in the middle of the page. Let's go ahead and save this. I'm going to restore it. And I'm going to right click this template that we just created together. I'm going to hit uh, create portal resource. And when I do that, this is actually going to make it accessible when we want to leverage this within our Web Center application. So this kind of broadcasts it to the application that this is now available for use. I'm going to hit OK. And what I am also going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit Go to Page Definition. The reason that I'm doing this is in order to make use of dynamic information coming from Web Center, we're going to need to put in for, uh, kind of backing information, the ability to bind that uh, backing information to our UI layer, and we're doing that through a page definition. So I'm going to hit Yes. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. So you'll notice that now we have a, um, a backing definition for the adaptive template. And prior to that, the two other templates already had it. And before we go ahead and fire things up, I want to review the CSS file. And then we'll do one last addition to our sample. I'm going to maximize this. So when we uh, use the page in a regular browser, we're going to set the content body width to 960 pixels. And by setting a margin of zero with auto, that's actually going to center it within the page. These two following items, main content and sidebar, are going to give us the ability to have a wide column and a narrow column defined by CSS within our page template. Now, the mobile logon link that I talked about before when we're browsing on the desktop, we don't want to display that. So I've gone ahead and set that to none. Now I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom of the file now, and we're going to take a look at the CSS media query. What this is saying is that any width 600 pixels or below, it's going to use these styles to override the prior ones. So what we're looking at here is the ability to take that header login box, which is actually a full login form, don't use that, but instead go ahead and display the mobile login link. On top of that, we're going to shrink our body to 300 pixels across, and we're going to take what was a sidebar on the right-hand side of the screen and collapse it to the left so that it resides underneath the main content that we want to display. Now, we're going to use the home page as our example where we're going to be showcasing this, uh, this particular new template. And if we go into the home page and go into the source, I have a snippet that I'm going to add here as well. So let me just go ahead and hop onto my desktop. I'm going to grab some sample content. And within this, uh, within this area, I'm going to go ahead and should be, should be right in here that I'll drop it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now, one thing, we could do a couple things. We can set the template at runtime. We can also set it at design time. If we wanted to set it at design time, we could go into the application resources, descriptors, ADF meta, and set it up within the ADF config file. So you'll notice here that if we do a quick search for globe, 
you'll notice there's a portal preference set up here, setting the default template. For this exercise, let's just go ahead and leave this as the default. And let's run our index.html file to bring up the portal so that we can actually set it at runtime.